will this topic appear on the exam next year? I really don't know. This game of chance is like predicting the appearance of heads or tails, each with a 50% probability. That is assuming that the coin is fair and each flip stands independently, of course. I wanted to unravel the mysteries of the past nine years, exploring the gap between expectations and observed outcomes. The question? Can we predict the Cape Chemistry Unit 1 Paper 2 exam topics? Welcome to the Academic Casino. Each year invites a gamble as students seek insights into the anticipated topics for the exam. Traditionally, my bets were on the topics I thought were frequently asked. But I wanted to test the numbers because numbers never lie. Or do they? This led me down a statistical rabbit hole taking me two months to climb out. Over the last 9 years, CXC has on average brought 9 out of 18 topics from the syllabus to the table. This means they test about 50% of the syllabus every year. Yet, something intriguing unfolds when you inspect the distribution of these topics. Modules 1, 2, and 3 are valued at 30 marks each, forming a paper with a total of 90 marks. But an uneven distribution emerges with CXC betting on 4, 3, and 2 topics from modules 1, 2, and 3 respectively. Thus, we find ourselves in a scenario where 20% of the exam belongs to module 1, 15% to module 2, and 10% to module 3. In this game of academic roulette, the top 4 topics from module 1 in the past 9 years have been the mole concept, atomic structure and periodic table, forces of attraction, and redox reactions. Intriguingly, they've only rolled the dice together once in the past nine years. If this follows a 10-year pattern, we might anticipate a reunion once in the next nine years. Yet, as we delve deeper into this, a fascinating pattern emerges. Atomic structure and periodic table and forces of attraction frequently share the stage together, appearing together a whopping 78% of the time. In contrast, redox reactions and energetics engage in a different game. The former often stands alone, while the latter plays a less frequent hand. Should energetics grace the stage, it focuses on assessing a student's knowledge on concepts like Hess's law, defining enthalpy changes, and constructing born Haber cycles. Our wild card in this little game is the kinetic theory topic. It has made the least frequent appearances over the past nine years, being only three times. And this includes an unexpected appearance on the 2023 exam paper. This begs the question, echoing through these halls, will it show up on the 2024 paper? On the 2024 paper. Take it lightly and you'll fall prey to gambler's fallacy. This is a belief that past unrelated outcomes affect future events. What I'm trying to say is don't assume that your next coin toss will favor heads because tails have dominated. The reality is that the appearance of a topic in the next year is not influenced by its presence in the year prior. The casino dealer, in this case CXC, deals your cards at random, and topics arrive on the exam purely by chance. For Module 2, the favorite topics are rates of reaction, acid-base equilibria, often seen together, and redox equilibria. But the first two topics, though frequently paired, sometimes appear without the redox equilibria topic. They are often shown with lower probability topics like buffers and pH or principles of equilibrium. Meanwhile, the solubility product topic plays an elusive high stakes game appearing least frequently. A bold assumption emerges that papers are pre-written at least one or two years in advance. A strategic move by CXC and I stress a business. The evidence points to a consistent structure since 2014, 
and also the energetics question on the 2023 paper mirrors the 2019 Cambridge Pre-U Chemistry paper 3. And a seemingly consistent pattern emerges between redox reactions and energetic topics alternating between yes no yes. A closer inspection reveals a yes no no yes yes no 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 yes yes pattern then shifts to no yes yes no no yes yes yes. If this pattern holds true and it's not merely a coincidence 2024 should play the no-no cards, meaning both redox reactions and energetics should not be on the 2024 paper. In the third module, group 7, period 3, and identification of cations and anions steal the spotlight with frequent appearances, while group 2 and transition elements take the middle ground. Group 4, however, is a quiet player, making the least frequent appearances. My hypothesis was under the assumption that there is no difference between the expected and observed frequency of each topic over the past 9 years. If true, it suggests that topic selection is a random roll of the dice, but humans, with their innate ability for pattern recognition, may discern order in this academic chaos. But while there may appear to be a pattern, the numbers remind us that topic selection is a roll of the dice. So question, can randomness be designed? Yes. Using a small data set in this experiment renders it susceptible to pseudo-randomness. This is efficiently generating seemingly random objects using limited randomness especially in a deterministic process like exam paper construction. If the exam structure remains unchanged for the next 10, 100, or 1000 years, with time, attention, and technical prowess, the exam topics may become as predictable as a loaded deck. But for now, it's a speculative gamble based on intuition. Even if a pattern seems present, the small data set lacks the statistical power to detect meaningful patterns or differences, and this leaves us in a game of chance. But the game is not over. To beat the house, tip the odds in your favor. Play the game right. Take a look at my strategic plan for studying for the Cape Chemistry Unit 1 exam in the description box below. <laughs>